a very senior role at Handler Open and you know, me being an engineer or being an optimist, I just gave a <laughs> shot, applied. Yeah. I got rejected within 24 hours. <laughs> One thing that I recently heard and stuck very closely is give more than you take. VC is a space where even if you're wrong 9 out of 10 times, it's fine. The one time that you're right, 1000x outcome, yeah. all your mistakes are forgotten. What's the best way to reach to you? What's your email? Karan.prasad. Hello, welcome to this episode where I have with me Karan Prasad. He works at Antler currently and he, he works in one of these roles which is one of the most coveted which is you know actually working in the investment team of a VC fund. I know all those who are watching this for sure have thought that you know how cool it would be to be a VC. So here we have Karan with us today to share what goes on into the life of a VC. So glad to have you here Karan. Likewise Gaurav, uh, you've been on the other side of the table as well. You've been an operator, you were an investor. And now you're back being an operator and uh, super excited to share my journey with you and your audience. Awesome. Awesome. Thanks. Thanks, Karan, for doing this. I think, uh, you know, one of the things that, you know, few people have myths about is, okay, you actually have to be in, say, you know, top consulting companies, uh, investment banking companies, and then you can actually break right. into VC. Uh, but over the years, you know, a trend that you and I have seen is even if you are an operator and let's also define an operator, somebody who's worked at a startup in in a capacity which through which they've learned a lot, exactly. right? So somebody who's been an operator, done impactful roles can also break into it. Let's turn the wheel of the time a little and understand a little bit about your experience. I know you've done engineering and yep. you're a hardcore Bangalorean, you know. Uh, so just share a little around that journey. How did what you studied translate into what you did next and eventually into VC? Great question, Gaurav, and uh, happy to share my uh, bits on that. Been in Bangalore for the majority of my life and... Uh, Ended up in engineering college when I was 18, had a great four years and then realized, you know, uh, being in the city, there are a lot of exciting ideas and exciting people to work with. Mm -hmm. So uh, placements through consulting or, you know, MNCs didn't really excite me. Uh, wanted to give Kormangla a shot. Ended up at a bootstrap startup uh, and being a generalist, even during my college days, felt that I wouldn't be a great fit under engineering or customer support or anything to do with technical. That's when I realized, you know, all those days of pitching for uh, sponsorship in your college fest and, you know, knocking on the doors yeah. made sense. So I uh, gave a shot at business development and uh, I didn't even know what go to market was back then. So I had to pick all of it from scratch. And uh, my first role was to sell to the US market. You know, these were late night hours mm -hmm. with an Indian accent with very limited uh, technical skill set. But, you know, it was a great exposure to pick skills on the go. And that's the advantage of being at a startup. You have great people around who are okay if you fail, but as long as you give your best shot. Did quite well, uh, got promoted within the first uh, financial year, uh, ended up being an account manager, mm -hmm. handled close to one third of the recurring revenue for the organization. And oh, wow. uh, just before the pandemic, we got acquired by a US uh, corporation called IDERA. For an Indian SaaS company to get acquired, uh, that to a bootstrapped one is, yeah. is quite an achievement. And uh, post that, I transitioned into Digital Ocean. You know, from bootstrapping, I went into a unicorn. Uh, similar role, but for a very different market. This time it was APAC, uh, mm -hmm. multiple languages, uh, extremely humble people, and uh, very talented. The role was quite similar. You know, a lot of companies were getting onto the cloud, and it was the pandemic. So you saw a lot of boom in, in gaming, in uh, online content, in education. So, uh, you know, these three, four sectors is what I deep dive into and understood what type of problem statements they're trying to solve for. And then uh, DigitalOcean went public, had a great run as well. And then that's when I realized, you know, uh, I wanted to do something extremely early stage, work very closely with founders, not on the other side of the table where I'm selling a solution, but building together with them. Mm -hmm. uh, along with this, um, I was very active in the community thanks to the product folks, uh, one of the best communities that I've ever been yeah. uh, part of. And... I'm sure a lot of people listening to this have heard of the community. Uh, did my bit over there on, from a product perspective. And uh, yeah, that's when I ran into Antler. Got it. Got it. You know, you, you mentioned very interesting things. Today, whenever, you know, anybody's having a conversation around SaaS, MRR is this new term. GTM is what people are using. But, uh, you know, just for timelines and since I've known Karan, this was 2018, 2019, when right. you were actually selling to the US. Yeah. I'm pretty sure like, you know, Zoom wasn't as popular as it is today back in 2018, 2019. What was your mindset through which you did all of these experiences, which got you into VC and how does that help you, help you today? Absolutely. I think exploring something that was completely unknown is what got me started. 
and uh, being in your early 20s you have a lot of time on your plate yeah, yeah. product folks happened because uh, the people over there were great and my intention was to work closely with people who could i could learn from or mm-hmm. who could be my mentor even though you know it's not a formal mentor mentee relation yeah right so spending time with the team over there or even at fusion charts and digital ocean where uh, my team leads or the people around me were way smarter than who i was helped me upskill at, at a drastic pace right I, i didn't really have a product background but one of the first projects that i worked on at tpf was community fund which was an accelerator for early stage communities you know that sort of was a community initiative that had a vc mindset one thing that you asked was what on the job helped me but i felt you know what i did for a living was very different for what i did in the community or beyond yes, my responsibilities yes, yeah. and that got me closer to antler and the vc ecosystem interesting can you share a little bit about what a community fund is what's the mindset with it and what's the kind of work you did there absolutely so we ourselves didn't know what we were getting into back then it was just an other experiment at tpf and it's something that we as individuals wanted to get to know better mm-hmm. idea over there was to help other communities to scale the way tpf scale so uh, we onboarded around 12 to 14 communities to work with us for 6 to 8 weeks with a community demo day which was completely new back then right so these were early stage communities with they had a problem statement that they were going after they knew the audience but they had to think through how do they build the community what platform do they use what's the type of content that they focus mm-hmm. on etc and tpf though we didn't have a playbook per se but we were you know been there done that a few years ago week on week you know we had our own set of workshops office hours uh, access to partners etc and then we culminated it with uh, an open demo day where you know i reached out to a bunch of vcs asked them to come by and antler was one of them Uh, oh okay and then you know this was something that we did back in 2020 yeah you can share a little about antler because antler's structure is very unique yeah. and like also a couple of programs and then we'll get into more specifics absolutely any time of the day <laughs> uh antler is a global early stage vc firm by that i mean that you know we're the first institutional investor in all of our portfolio companies mm-hmm. most likely it's pre product or even pre revenue oh wow and uh, we're present in 20 plus countries as of today with over 600 investments so it's a global community that you get access to from day one mm-hmm. how we differentiate is we work with founders even before we write the check so we run something called uh, a program the residency program here in mm-hmm. india and across all uh, the locations that we operate in what we do is we bring together a certain set of operators in india we're looking at 70 individuals uh, with a mix of tech and business background you could either have an idea you you need not have an idea you just need to be you know have that entrepreneurial mindset with mm-hmm. you to build something that's venture backable and then you spend 2 to 3 months with us or you know most of the time goes with the community so you are in that room with 70 plus builders actively tearing down ideas uh, evaluating each other's pitches looking at you know market trends etc and then you come to antler and you pitch and raise investment so uh this is you know it, it's more of a cbc similar to stoa where yeah, you yeah. come you build your own startup and you join the antler portfolio got it and and what's the best way to reach to you what's your email karan.prasad@antler.co yeah uh, i <laughs> yeah, i mentioned this because in case you have an idea and you want to reach out to karan that's Absolutely. that's his go to yeah. quite active on twitter and linkedin as well mm-hmm. uh, happy to have a chat interesting that you you know bring that up because my next question was around you come from an operating background um you come from a place where you know you volunteered for different things in yeah. the community how did you you know mix all of that and convince antler that you know what i'm ready for my next role to be a part of the investment team right so how did that switch come about it was a serendipitous conversation i feel one of the team members at antler rahul i knew him even before he joined antler mm-hmm. through the ecosystem and uh, we've been in touch uh, throughout those days he was trying to move to bangalore so I was helping him find a place oh nice <laughs> nice yeah fun fact a very senior role at antler opened and uh, you know me being an engineer or being an optimist i just gave a <laughs> shot apply yeah. uh on a saturday evening i got rejected within 24 hours <laughs> okay but okay. you know i i felt it was an error or the uh, algorithm threw something away and i sent across in cold email on uh, oh, sunday nice. night uh, nice. didn't want to give up yeah so that happened and then you know because i knew rahul and the rest of the team uh, i realized that the role was a little too senior but i still got an interview just hmm. because that they wanted to hear me out because i was being very persistent nice uh anyone who's looking out i think that's a cue for you yes um, yes fast forward 3 months a couple of other openings opened up again at antler and this was more of an operator role mm-hmm. uh specifically for the program team in vc especially for analysts and associates 
I see three buckets uh, where they can fit in. One is initially the sourcing bit of it, where mm-hmm. you go into the ecosystem, you network, you reach out to your uh, alumni, etc., and you try to source deals. Second is uh, more on the uh, investments vertical, where you do a lot of due diligence, you understand the market, you look at Correct. competitors, you look at global trends, etc., and this is in the middle of the deal, right? Yeah. And once that closes, you hand them off to portfolio. This is a, a proper operator role within the VC firm. You know, you work on multiple products at the same time instead of building just one. Yeah. And at Antler, that's what we do. We don't. We are a startup that builds other startups and, you know, across multiple sectors. These three uh, segments are where uh, analysts and associates are regularly hired. Mm-hmm. And uh, Antler, the way we operate, you know, we are essentially a founding team member for all the startups that we work with. Nice. And... Uh, you know, this was a role that excited me a lot. And given that I worked with a lot of funders through TPF, uh, through DigitalOcean and Fusion Charts, where, you know, we set them up on the cloud, we set their tech stack up, help me get a foot in the door. Interesting. Actually, you know, just want to shift gears a little and want to get into the trenches, as they say, right? Yeah. You mentioned there are three buckets in which typically any analyst associate, somebody from the investment team will work. Can you probably spend a minute on each of them? You know, what do you mean by sourcing? How do you source companies? That is one. Second, in diligence, what is it that you're looking for? And third, around portfolio support, what's the kind of portfolio support you do, right? So maybe a minute or two on each of these buckets so that people understand what a VC does better. Great question. I can keep going on and on. So feel free to interrupt. (laughs) Uh, First bucket, scouting slash sourcing is essentially being out there in the market, understanding who's building or, you know, even if they're not ready to raise investments, just being with them, validating their idea, Mm -hmm. ensuring that they're, you know, they hear the thoughts of, a VC or an investor and making sure that founders have access to you, right? Mm -hmm. And how is it that you can add value to the Mm -hmm. founder? Because they're talking to multiple funds, they're talking to multiple associates, investors, not just India, but globally. So how is it that you stay relevant? How can you add value even before you evaluate them as an investment Mm -hmm. is extremely helpful for the founder. You know, I, I want to pause you there and this is an important lesson for everyone. I'm sure like, you know, studying in a couple of these institutes gives you that network. But Karinur, despite not, you know, from these networks, he was able to break into it and do that successfully, right? And a lot, I think, has to do with his initiatives uh, in the community of TPF or say just being active on LinkedIn, Twitter, just being out there and helping people. Is that why you say you were able to build this network? Yeah, absolutely. One thing that I recently heard and stuck very closely is give more than you take. Yeah. And uh, I still remember before I joined Antler, uh, they were trying to crack a couple of partnerships with uh, a product organizations. Mm-hmm. And I knew people on both sides of the table. Correct. So I was like, hey, I'm not part of your team yet, but here's what I can do. Oh, wow. Can I go ahead with it? Oh, wow. And, you know, if you take some work out of someone's table, they'll definitely appreciate you for it. Yeah, yeah. And I could add value or I could show what I could bring to the team even before I joined the team. So very nice. That's so was this like out. a mini assignment that you yourself defined <laughs> did and they eventually like, you know, yeah, you could you? call that. Oh, very assignment. nice. Yeah. Self-assigned nice. assignment. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's true. And you know, that's the kind of awareness you had that, you know what, this is something that you can solve for them given right. all that you've done. So that that's another lesson for you. If you think you can solve a problem for like, you know, people just go ahead, ask them and do it for them. Right. About the second bit around due diligence, yes. how do you go about it? I think that's where the meat is, honestly. Uh, so I'd love to know more around that. So when there's a pitch that comes to the investments team, I think there are three specific factors that we look at. First is obviously the team. Give, we operate at such an early stage. Yeah. Uh, as a team, it could be what's the experience that you bring? How are you complementary as founders? You know, you can just be two roommates, two people who have studied together, but do you really have the complementary skill set to exactly. build a billion dollar business as a founder do you really want to build that business that vcs look at yep. that's the first aspect second would be the idea uh, is it an incremental offering that you're trying to build is it a five minute delivery versus a 10 minute delivery or are you building something that's transformational something mm-hmm. like you know what the present set of unicorns are trying to solve for something that you know is empowering the billion billions of indians or uh, a billion dollar market globally mm-hmm. right mm-hmm. so that's on the idea third would be you know just an add-on to the idea is this the perfect time to build what you're building right, right? the timing yeah right. timing right so as an analyst or an associate how do you get aspects of all these three uh parameters on the team perspective you try to see you know where they study try to talk their mm-hmm. their colleagues or their yeah. classmates yeah. try to see if you know what what were they as individuals second on the idea you look at um has someone already built this in other markets? Mm-hmm. Is some other fund already investing in this space? And on the 
timing bit of it again looking at the global market trends looking at what's what's uh, changed in the last few months yeah, and yeah. what's laying ahead you know the ability to predict what's going to happen in the next few years is what makes a vc a great one so i think interesting these three things um and again you know given this is an interactive format to our audience who's listening maybe take it up as an assignment you sure read about you know funding news for a lot of startups uh, so just go back for the in the past two or three months look at 10 ideas and try to answer these three questions and think that you know hey uh, can i think along these three lines across these startups and is my answer like what is my thesis or insight around it right Absolutely. so maybe i think people can do that but interesting point uh, karan that's around you know the diligence the third bit portfolio, portfolio. support i think um, it's it's something that's very close to my heart because that is where a vc truly makes a difference yeah. uh, so would love to know more from you around what's the portfolio help you do or say as antler you've seen you know uh, helping your portfolio company so would love to know more about that i feel that capital is the least that vcs can offer it's not Uh, the more nice. anymore yeah uh with portfolio what antler does or what a lot of vcs try to crack these days is how do you be a team member for the founder yeah. how do you work very closely with them be on the same side of the table and of course once in a while uh have those uncomfortable conversations what we as antler do is uh one of the most favorite things is building that gtm uh, mm-hmm. a mm-hmm. lot of them are just getting their product out how do we help them with introductions to get their pilot projects done how do we get those first few customers and uh, beyond that is hiring hiring at the early stage is extremely competitive yeah. especially in a market like india yeah. and uh, if it comes to tech talent you know the challenge right so our portfolio team actively scouts on linkedin looks for talent uh, we do a lot of screening interviews very nice so that we save the bandwidth of the founder uh, if there are assignments we make sure that you know there are relevant candidates that go through the process and then only send shortlisted candidates to the founders beyond that given that we come at the pre seed stage you know there's obviously fall on funding that uh, is a crucial milestone for founders yeah so helping them with pitch deck preparations uh, cuz we that's what we do for a living we go through decks yeah, yeah. Uh, you know even when asleep so <laughs> <laughs> so yes. how can we help founders prepare that uh, deck that's going to land what's the storytelling that's going to work also making relevant introductions within the ecosystem cuz we know analysts and associates in other funds we would have studied together or we would have had some sort of interactions together yeah. so how can we make these warm intros uh, there are a lot of seed and series a funds that want to work closely with antler mm-hmm. want to make sure that when our portfolio companies are ready for fundraise they are the first ones that they talk to so for a founder to build this relationship to go to those mixers to have those conversations yeah, yeah. day in and day out is very exhausting but it's part and parcel of our role and we do it for 30 companies at once instead of them doing one at a time mm. right so yeah three buckets again within the three <laughs> buckets uh, under portfolio would be uh, gtm yeah. uh, hiring and yeah. then uh, fundraise karan actually you know thanks thanks again for you know putting the activities in those buckets but that said th- these are a lot of these activities right yeah. as a fresher i mean it it might be a little overwhelming so can you tell me where do i start you know as a fre- not exactly a fresher but say somebody who's been a generalist who's worked at a startup where do i start such that you know i'm able to show spikes on a few of these things and be able to break into vc yeah not just generalizing this for a fresher but for an operator let's mm-hmm. say in the 0 to 2 to 3 years of experience yeah in that bracket i think having that exposure of working at a startup is very crucial because you've seen the founders you've seen you worked very closely with them and you have that experience of knowing what happens within a startup mm-hmm. you know what happens with the product what happens with engineering what's the turnaround on time how do, how does support work you know founders usually do that regularly yeah then uh, hiring of course then product etc so look at the spaces that you are excited by or you want to deep dive into right now there are we see firms that are uh, sector agnostic but there are some that are very specific to the type of investments yeah. the domains that they operate in yeah so let's say you as an individual are interested in deep tech or web3 uh or just saas and fintech etc so look at funds in that space once you know what's your calling you need to make sure that you have a profile that adds value to the vc mm-hmm. right because like you mentioned this is one of the most coveted uh, roles or industries hopefully it will change very soon and it has right so until up until i think 2010 vc or just in the us venture capital was just deploying capital and mm-hmm. very limited hands on involvement but right now the demand for operators in in vc has gone up drastically when you are applying or when you want to get into vc get that 
uh, sorted. What what domain do you want to specialize mm-hmm. in, and what's the skills that you bring? And once you know that, narrow down on the funds that you want to apply at, and uh, look at the people that are already working. Right on LinkedIn, you get to know their previous work yeah. history. Yeah. You you know how Garo transitioned from that role to a VC and then moved on, etc. Right. So having that. a uh, trajectory helps you understand how you can chart your own growth mm-hmm. you could go through their portfolio you could see the type of investments that they have made and if you see any interesting founders that are building in this space you could essentially make it very easy for uh, an analyst by sourcing a deal and if you do that to me i'll scratch your back whenever there's an opening on my team or in my organization You'll i'm happy that. to refer you yeah. right and you have that proof of work up front my interview or any role that you see in the vc ecosystem most of them ask for proof of work at the beginning it could yep. be an assignment or it could be a specific project that you've worked on initially mm-hmm. right so building that profile initially makes a lot of value add to skip the first two three interview steps Understood. right and uh moving on i think once you know that you want to apply for this specific role get ready for that role even before you apply uh yeah i think this is what uh, you should look at rather than just applying on a website and DMing someone over LinkedIn, going that extra mile really helps. Got it. What was your interview process like, or what does an interview process in a general VC looks like? And second, how do I prepare? What are the resources? For sure, good old days. Uh, yeah. <laughs> going back to that. So uh, as soon as I applied, uh, there was a case study that I had to submit. I think uh, if I remember correctly, if I had to invest between two startups, mm-hmm. which one would I and why? So right. I had to build a case for that startup. So I had to, you know, quickly go through the founder's profile, the idea, the market. Uh, in india and globally and if they have raised any angel investments or any publicly announced investments etc and make a case for it i didn't do a great job at it i'll be honest okay uh but given that you know i was at the i was knocking on atlas door almost every week uh got shortlisted to an interview stage and then there was another assignment that was passed on to me on how i would build the entire program experience for the founder mm. so what i did i had this experience of uh building something similar at tpf at community fund and i also knew Uh, a college senior uh, we've met never met in real life we were just internet buddies okay. uh, and she was part of the antla singapore experience so i reached out to her i gave her a v1 of my assignment and right. i asked her to tear it down right. and give me some critical feedback uh, and then i think she just sent me a voice note and you know, this was middle of the night and then i got a lot of more you know clarity and ideas right. on what i could do better Uh, so i find you in my assignment again and i sent it across back to the team and then uh, there were a bunch of interviews again so ideally there's a manager or the director who interviews you then there's an assignment uh, then you talk to both the partners cuz uh, more than you know your skill set it's also the values or mm-hmm. the individual that you are because most vcs are very small teams right yeah. and sir because of the way we function we are at around 18 to 20 team members now uh, and plus interns but most other funds usually are single digit teams if you go to the website and you yeah, look at the yeah. team page it's just eight or nine people and then interns you keep coming in and going out and we have converted a lot of interns right so uh, i think we have converted three interns into full time roles all mm-hmm. of them were freshers oh very nice yeah so getting uh, getting into a vc firm as an intern and converting is also a great uh, path that path to explore. Yeah. yeah so that is one bit I uh, would love to know second also around like the kind of resources that you've seen uh, people use to crack these interviews right if there are any at the top of your mind would love if you can share what i'll do is also send a bunch of links that you could put in the bio of the uh, episode yeah. there's a lot of content that's written out there I, i leveraged a lot of linkedin and twitter when i was getting into vc just mm-hmm. following team members of certain vc firms and you know a lot of them write a memo on why they invested in such a startup mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that gives you incredible insights you know the fund would have spent two months pre investment and post investment to come up with that thesis or that memo yeah. so you get to explore the entire journey as an external person right Agreed. so once you know uh, antler does that a lot of vc firms do that as well and then there are uh, certain podcasts and newsletters that you can subscribe mm-hmm. to which i don't really have on top of my mind but we'll include it in the yeah. bio got it no fair enough i think um, one thing again from an exercise perspective i think couple of our listeners can actually do right is uh, what you mentioned karan maybe you know a case or a thesis is going to be a part of your investment uh, you know interview process so why don't you go ahead and pick probably a particular sector or a particular company uh, the earlier things that we mentioned uh, you know you could in- think about okay why the why this team works what's there in the market a little about the competition the product couple of these things for 
you also to hone your analytical skills and the ability to invest and um, there are a couple of resources uh, you know i'll also share a little that you know i yeah, probably use absolutely. during my process uh, if you go to shri ram krishnan's website uh, shri ram k he's or rather the memo is why sequoia invested in youtube so he mentioned back in 2006 when they invested yeah. why they invested in sequoia right so a lot of the assignments that i did i based it on that back home also i think there is a very interesting series which india quotient and stellaris do uh, in which they've broken down a lot of these concepts around okay how do you arrive at the tam how do you calculate the tam uh, would love to know a little bit and probably this is uh, towards the end of our segment what does it take for someone to succeed succeed in this role right like what does a good day or a week or an achievement looks like in this role right fair enough yeah it's it's very personal or it varies from mm-hmm. individual to individual but uh, i think at uh, at a high level it's making your founder successful if you had to you know put that down into metrics that could be the fundraise that goes into uh, the next round yeah uh, you know what's the multiple that you're trying to get them who are the funds that are investing in your startups yeah. that's a great signal on how successful you are as a fund in terms of the value that you had how many hires that you can close for a team right so in pre seed uh, or even in other rounds as well there are multiple investors that come in the same round there mm-hmm. are multiple angels that invest right how can you as a specific investor add more value or be there for the founders or be the go to person on your cap table you're going to have 10 to 12 or even more people but when things go uh, south like who's the first person <laughs> who's the you person? pick up and you yeah. call yeah if you are that investor nothing like it yeah? Yeah. i think these are main buckets on what makes us we we see successful got it got it this is good but again the story is always incomplete without knowing what the bad days or the challenges sure. look like so maybe if you can share like you know a couple of challenges i think that's helpful yeah for sure so uh, again you know with fundraise you're going to be working with your founder or your portfolio company and talking to multiple funds of course you just need one to crack but you get a lot of rejections you get a lot of repetitive yeah. feedback or there's something that is not landing right there so you know how do you make sure that you keep the founder uh, motivated you you know you make sure that they don't lose hope and how do you add value how do you iterate and make them better for the next pitch i think that's a very tough job and that's where you know you really get to know the value of your investor yeah beyond that of course you know with hiring you close the role but the candidate never shows up uh you're sourcing some deals where you are unable to close it or uh you're not able to build conviction uh or the deal breaks through when you're almost there just uh, to add to that you know vc is a space where even if you're wrong 9 out of 10 times it's fine the one time that you're right if it's a 100x or a 1000x outcome yeah. all your mistakes are forgotten so yeah. you need like you know just one or two success <laughs> stories to actually build out your career so fair i think uh this has been very helpful just one last parting note for you know people who are actually wanting to break into this role right uh so your listeners are there why don't you just address them uh, directly and you know just tell them what is it that they can do to break into a role like yours absolutely uh i don't think you should get into vc just because it's a lucrative business or it's uh, a little glamorous but if you've made up your mind you want to get into vc uh i think you know like we've discussed going beyond uh, just the interview process yeah. going beyond what your responsibilities are it could be through sourcing deals it could be through building your own thesis out uh, making those connections or even helping uh, founders hire right making sure that even before joining a vc firm if you could close these roles or add value through gtm nothing like it so yeah no i think uh, again this has been a very insight packed session in that sense karan thanks so much for you know sharing your journey right from what you were doing prior to vc how different things you did help you break into vc right and all that there is to know about uh, what goes into being a part of the investment team uh, this has been fun thank you so much for doing this and i really hope our listeners uh, learn a lot from this and you know karan's email address from what i have known karan is fairly accessible uh, and again antil is a great place for you to actually go out there try out new ideas and find that sense of you know support to build your own startup right Uh so again this has been very fun thank you so much Karan for doing this thanks so much for hosting me Gaurav uh really enjoyed this conversation and uh, looking forward to working with you and the rest of the team in the coming days awesome sounds great thanks buddy right. cheers cheers